Hello, welcome to Salt City Knits podcast. I'm Emily, and this is a podcast all about my making life, especially knitting. And today is April 18th, and I'm back. I missed you that last week. I was down with a cold. Every member of my family had it, <laughs> I think at one point or another, but um, it wasn't too short, it, too long lived or too severe. So we're doing well. The weather is very, very gray and rainy, and I debated whether I should record today. Um, the lighting is bad, <laughs> there's rain, um, we had some hail, and there's been some thunder. So I figured if I don't record today, it won't happen this week. I've got some other things going on, and so here I am with whatever the lighting is gonna be, it's what it's gonna be, and hopefully the noise won't be too much. Um, you can find me um, and all my designs on um, Ravelry, or at least most of my designs. I still have a few that I'm working on putting up on Ravelry as Salt City Knits, also on Instagram as Salt City Knits, and my patterns are also available at yarnbrary.com. So yeah, and if you need to get in touch with me, um, you can um, definitely uh, message me on Instagram is probably the best way to do that. So I'm excited to be back. I have some finished objects and I have um, a couple works in progress. I have some news on pattern design and I have a book recommendation. So I'm excited for all of that. So first off, I have to tell you, we have had a really good couple of weeks, especially since I didn't record Last week, um, I feel like, you know, I want to give you a little update, but we had a really nice Easter um, weekend as well as my niece Ella was married the day before Easter on the 8th and um, her wedding was just beautiful. She absolutely looked like a goddess. She did. She had this amazing gold dress. And if I say gold fringed wedding dress, it might sound like some, you know, pageant or Vegas kind of style, but it wasn't at all. It was really beautiful and boho and she, oh, she just looked amazing. And um, it was a lovely wedding. And then yeah, Easter, all with my family. Spring has really shown up in a big way here in Utah, finally. And um, even though we're still having some bad weather like today, um, that's pretty typical of spring, you know, um, but things are greening up and it's just been really nice. And that, oh, the, the lightness of the weather and my mood have really gone hand in hand. I'll tell you, I've been just so much happier the last little bit. I know in the past I've dealt with seasonal depression and it hasn't been as bad the last few years because I've really been better at enjoying the, I don't know, the downtime and that recentering time that you get with winter. But this has been a long winter and um, I'm just feeling light and bright and breezy about life in general. It's good. So anyway, it's been really great. We also celebrated um, with uh, my son, my oldest. Um, his birthday is actually tomorrow and we had dinner together on Sunday to celebrate him. And we also have, and I will not go into long detail about this, although my family would love it if I did. I just had somebody at my door, so I had to stop for a minute. But going back um, to what I was saying, we have a holiday that we invented as a family. Um, we invented it in 2020 during lockdown, April. You know, everybody remembers April of 2020. And um, anyway, without going into a lot of detail, it's very comedic and it all revolves around socks. So we have this um, silly holiday that we created um, back then. So this was our third year, fourth year, 21, two. Yeah, this is our fourth. How did that happen already? <laughs> this is our fourth year celebrating our fictitious holiday. And um we celebrated that this last week and it was a lot of fun too. So anyway, it's just been a good time and I feel especially so like creative right now and I felt like I have so many ideas just bursting at the seams and I want to make and do everything. <laughs> 
it's a really nice feeling actually you know and we all go through those seasons where we feel more and less creative and that's okay i'm learning um over time to embrace the seasons embrace the times of rest and recuperation and reset where you know things are more dormant and then utilize the times where you know all those um, ideas are flowing and the energy is high and then be okay with the times where it's the slog you know the push the hard driving time and then the time of reward and and plenty and celebration you know those are the seasons of our lives and they're beautiful and it's okay to have all of them anyway I'm waxing philosophical here so maybe I will get back on track <laughs> so anyway let's get back to some knitting and um, I have some crochet this week as well and I want to talk about them so first off I have to talk about this shawl I am so in love with it I showed it just the baby beginning um, last time. And so this shawl is my newest design and I just think it's so pretty. Look at that. It's so pretty. I love that edging. And um, let me show it to you more. I'll put some, oh, that was, that was attractive. I put some, I'll put some pictures in as well, but this is called Dixie Creek, which again is named after, oh, and the color is definitely changing thanks to the lighting, but you know, it's life. That's what the color looks like right there. <laughs> Bright peachy pink with lots of color speckles. Um, it's a shallow triangle, meaning that it is definitely longer by quite a bit than it is deep. It's got a nice long wingspan to it. It's got some simple lace. This lace is not very complicated. Um, and it's got um, this beautiful Pico edging. Oh, which I just absolutely love how it turned out. Isn't it just lovely? So as I said, I've named this Dixie Creek and I am thrilled with it. Um, I knit it out of sweet nesting fibers. It's a single ply merino fingering weight yarn. And I used um, about 230 grams. Here's the last little bit of it, which is about 10 grams left. And these these skeins were 120 grams each, so they were bigger than the normal fingering weight skein. There it is. It's just a really pretty little bit. Um, and um, so anyway, you would you would need probably three skeins of this yarn, unless you you know you could do contrast and then you could add in some mini skeins. I haven't done all the measurements for that, but I'm hoping I can find some test knitters who would like to try different color combinations, maybe knitting the lace sections um, in a different color than the stockinette and garter sections, maybe with a contrast bind off, um, different things like that I think would be really fun to try. So I am putting out a testing call for people who would like to be a test knitter for this shawl. The time frame for it will be through the end of May and it will start um, probably the end of next week. But there is a link to a form in the box down below. And if you will fill out that form that um, if you are interested in test knitting it, um, I'm looking for people who knit both from charts and those who would prefer written instructions for the lace sections um, and who can, yeah, who can, um, can commit to knit a shawl by the end of May. So, um, yeah, so go and fill that form out if you are interested. Um, anyway, I'm really excited about that. I just love it. I really love how it turned out and I had so much fun designing it. And like I said, my mind is just bursting with more ideas, more things I want to design. I've always loved knitting shawls and I think it was 
a little over a year ago, maybe it was about a year ago, I had kind of gone on this pause of knitting shawls. I thought, you know, I, I guess I, I just haven't been wearing them as much, so I should probably stop knitting shawls. <laughs> And so I did for a few years, probably three or four years, I didn't knit any shawls. And then um, I just kept looking at them and looking at them and looking at them and wanting to make them. And at one point just went, well, I think I made the wrong choice back there. If I'm not really wearing my shawls, then either A, I'm making the wrong shawls or B, I need to learn how to wear them because I love to make them, or C, a combination of the two. And I really think it was that combination of the two. And so I, I have been, I've just been embracing them a lot more and um, embracing the fun and the joy. There's something so joyful about knitting a shawl. It's just such an enjoyable process. So anyway, I also want to design all the shawls. So I have been ordering a bunch of different books. Um, I'm doing an online class and um, just, yeah, just having a great time with that. So it's been a lot of fun. A lot of, most of the books have been stitch. What am I trying to say? Stitch dictionaries. I had two and I've ordered two more. Um, and let me know if you'd like to know what stitch dictionaries I've, I've enjoyed, just comment that in the bottom. Uh, maybe I'll show those in a future episode. But yes, loving it, really enjoying it. So yes, I will be knitting this shawl, the Dixie Creek shawl for the next, the rest of this month and um, May, we'll be doing the test knit. And um, I knit this in two weeks. I am a fairly quick knitter, but I was having to do the knitting and the designing at the same time. So, you know, I had to rip back sections several times um, to, because I, you know, I would change my mind on how I wanted to do something. Um, and I was having to take all the notes and charting things out and different things like that. I personally use lace charts if there is not a chart, I don't usually enjoy knitting lace. I want to know, and, and cables usually as well. Um, I mean, if it's more than just a cable, if it's multiple cable patterns all working together, I am always going to want a chart um, because that's just the way that my mind works. But not everybody is that visual. A lot of people want the, the written pattern, the written instructions for the pattern as well. So um, I'm really trying to make it something that will be very clear for either one. So anyway, that is this shawl and I have been enjoying wearing it mostly just like this, just draped over my shoulders. I love having these little curly ends with the picos hanging down, but I have also worn it kind of bandana style where I've worn it in the front and wrapped around. That's also really pretty. The thing about the, this single ply merino is it has a really nice drape to it. And so I think this shawl would probably be best. I mean, I think you could do it in any fingering weight, natural fiber, but leaning more toward the protein fibers rather than the cotton or linen um, just because you want the a little bit of bounce to it. Um, however, I think that the drape that you get from either a single ply or from yarn that has, you know, alpaca or silk or yak, oh, yak would be amazing. Um, you get a beautiful drape, which is so nice in shawls to have that kind of, um, I don't know, that looseness, it opens up beautifully in lace and you get some beautiful stitch definition um, and color pop. The single ply just takes color like nobody's business. It's so amazing. Anyway, all right, so that is the Dixie Creek shawl. Next, I have um, a finished pair of socks and I also showed these in progress last time. These are so fun and the sun is coming out a little bit. So the storm is clearing up. Hopefully the lighting is getting a little better. <laughs> These socks are just a pair of vanilla socks, plain stockinette that I knit cuff down. The difference is that I used the cuff 
from my um, candy floss socks, which is a free pattern. And this one is available both on Ravelry and yarnberry.com. But it has just this fun little twisty cable. And then the candy floss socks has a, that cable runs all the way down. Um, one side for the left foot, the other side for the right foot. Um, and it comes in multiple sizes. So that's also available. But I just used the cuff and then just knit and stockinette stitch for the rest. And this yarn, um, I, I mentioned this before, but it was a gift from my good friend Renee, my dear friend Renee, for my birthday this last year. And oh, my nails go so well with it. Look at that. How fun. That was not planned. <laughs> it's just good spring colors. I've got some fun flowers there and leaves on my nails. But they, the yarn is Area 51 Fibers and the colorway is oh mr darcy and it came with this blue mini and then this one was one i just had in my stash i don't have any idea what yarn it is i think this might have just been um a test dyed yarn from the yarnberry one that i just dyed um to test color on because i'm pretty sure i could name the exact dye that was used to make this anyway um but that was just something I added in so these are going to be for me and I'm excited to now put them in my drawer although I'm only wearing sandals at this point regardless of the temperature because it's April I need sandals but they turned out great and they were so fun to knit self-striping socks are always such a joy aren't they you just want to keep going one more row one more color change one more stripe so much fun. I don't even have any socks on my needles right now. Although I'm pretty sure I will change that today or tomorrow. My husband and I um, have a couples retreat that we do with some dear friends and we do it every spring and every fall. And um, it's we go, we find like a, a big house, an Airbnb somewhere, not too far away, you know, within a couple hours of drive um, here in the state. And um, we go and we just get together and we have a discussion topic. And these are all people that we've kind of been raising our children in the same homeschooling community and have just been really good friends for years. And it's just a really wonderful recharged time. And then, you know, we will have some time where we'll just go off by ourselves and talk and spend time together. And, um, but we enjoy our meals together and discussion and, um, it's just such an uplifting and positive thing. And I always like to take some really good knitting with me because I get lots of knitting done usually at the retreats. So I'm definitely got to be thinking about what project I want to take. <laughs> so I'll probably cast on some socks. Um, but I don't know. I have so many things I want to make. All right. Works in progress. So this one is kind of on the borderline between a finished object and a work in progress, but it's not quite there, but it's this cute little sweater. It's a little toddler boy size sweater. I think it's about a size 12 months. Um, little sweater that I knit for some dear friends of ours who just recently had a baby and this will not fit him, of course, until the next winter, which will be just about the right timing. Um, I knit this using, let's see where my yarn is, using, this is yarn from Hobby Lobby, and it is Yarn B, Yarn ID. It is an 80% acrylic, 20% polyamide, and it is an Aran weight yarn. And I had to dip into this skein just to finish the bind off. So mostly it was knit with one skein. I think that if I made it a row or two shorter in the body, I could have, I, I could still get another one out of this, which is what I'm planning on doing. Um, I used Tin Can Knits Gramps cardigan, but I left off the shawl collar. And that was simply because, well, for two reasons. One is because um, 
this yarn really is a little thicker. It is definitely thicker than what the yarn is called for in the pattern. The pattern calls for a worsted weight. Um, I would say this is a, a pretty robust Erin. It's not chunky. It's not bulky, but it's, it's a pretty heavy duty Erin as far as how thick it is. Um, and so this is already me knitting the smallest size and it definitely turned out like a 12 months, not a zero to six months. Um, even though I used, I still use the recommended needle and my gauge, my, my gauge is just so much bigger, you know? So it turned out, it turned out bigger. So I was just imagining the bulk of that shawl collar with a little, you know, a little guy with a big bulky collar. I just didn't think that would be comfortable. And then again, the, the, also the yarn requirement. I could see that I was getting close to the end. So I chose to just, um, make a simple button band, um, without the shawl collar and, um, very easy to do with that pattern. Very, very easy to figure out, oh, I'm not going to do the short row. When it tells you to do short row shaping, I just skipped to the end, <laughs> you know, of putting in the buttonholes and then binding off. But it turned out so cute. It's really darling. Very simple, but really fun. Um, I need to weave in ends and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try blocking this. Um, a lot of times acrylic yarns don't wet block really well, but I've had some really good luck specifically with Yarn Bee brand acrylic yarns um, blocking really beautifully. So I'm going to assume that this is going to do a good job and it has a really nice feel to it. I'm just, yeah, I really enjoy it. And I think it's going to be great for the family who this is their first little baby. Anyway some good friends. Cute little guy. So there we go. Fun project. Doesn't take much time. Baby knits are always so satisfying. The lighting is just going light, dark, light, dark as the um, clouds pass by <laughs> over the sun. And again, I have to show this bag again. This is from Southern Sparrow Handmade. Tiff made this and I love it. Isn't it so cute? Just very simple construction, very simple canvas, but it has this cute kind of, I don't know if you can see that, just really light kind of ditzy um, floral print, but it's kind of a gray on cream. And then there's her label in there. Little zipper pocket. And I, one thing I didn't show before was this cute, the charm. The charm says the unicorn is my spirit animal and then it has a unicorn horn as well. Yeah, it's hard to see. There we go. Really fun. All right. I am not going to show you my sweater because I didn't do any more work on it. Honestly, I'm kind of losing my oomph for that project. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm letting it sit for a little bit so I can see if I'm going to keep going with it or if I'm going to reclaim the yarn from it. I think it's just taking too much work. It's not what I can just sit down and knit, but the knitting is not exciting. Um, it takes too much work in trying to figure out and do all the math, every single stripe I'm doing to both separate a mini skein equally between body and sleeves and also to fade it and also to make sure that my numbers are really good for my fit because it's a me drafted pattern or a me designed pattern and having all of those things and yet also just stockinette stitch. <laughs> I'm just not enjoying the combination of boring plus detailed if that makes sense i don't mind the detail when they the creativity is feeling really strong but anyway and i love the yarn i love the yarn so much that i kind of don't want to put it into a project that i'm not enjoying i want to enjoy the finished object obviously but i also want to enjoy the process I'm not enjoying the process on that one right now oh so it's hibernating for a little bit 
and then I'll see if that interest comes back and is renewed. Um, and if not, I'm not far enough into it that I would not reclaim the yarn. Like I, that where I would just be like, I don't know. I don't know if I would get to that point anyway. I love the yarn. I would reclaim the yarn. I would unravel it, reball it up and um, use it for something else. I'm thinking that might be where I end up, but not making a permanent decision at this point. But I had this bag with all my little bits left over from my fragmentation shawl. And so I just decided to add a few more bits and my crochet hook is hanging off here. Come on. There we go. And so I just decided to make another granny stripe blanket. And so I have started it and I've just literally thrown in a bunch of random colors into the bag that already had my colors from my fragmentation shawl. I've added a bunch of brights in there as well. Um, some blues and other things. Um, and just started on, on, started in on it. So the, I'm making this in a baby size, which basically means I cast on as many stitches as I wanted to, <laughs> or cast, chained as many stitches as I wanted to. And this is the size I'm doing. <laughs> Man, it was all looking so tidy, but now I'm apparently balled it up in there. But anyway, so that's what I have so far. I'm just using up little bits. And so there are some places where I don't even like, for example, where is it? This, this pink, I started here and got down and then back here and I was already done. So it didn't even go all the way across, you know, but it's just little bits. Right here, there's three different pinks right here. You probably can't tell, but this row right here is like a pink, a peachy pink, and then a peach <laughs> um, across. And so it's all just whatever colors I've got. And I've been pretty random about it and just really enjoying it. It's so much fun. I've been weaving in ends every, I don't know, three inches or so. So I've done that two different times where I've gone back and just woven in all the ends. But you know what? You just kind of can't beat a granny stripe blanket. This is my third one. I have completed two before. I did one that was all scraps. Well, I can't say it was all scraps. It was all pretty much 20 grams. Um, but they were minis. They were mix, mix and match minis. Um, and I worked on it for probably two years and just added things in. Um, and that one, I it gets used all the time. It's in my family room, in our TV room. And um, it's kind of the one I always reach for when I'm watching TV. I, there's something so amazing about a crocheted fingering weight blanket. It has just like, almost like the perfect weight for me. It's not too heavy or bulky to where I feel like it's stiff or, um, I don't know, just bulky. But it's not, because because you have the, the thickness of the crochet, it's got enough weight to be cozy. So anyway, that's been really fun. And um, a little bit about crochet hooks. I know that when I was talking about my crochet squares, um, I think it was my first episode of Salt City Knits, I was talking about my crochet hooks. I have made a discovery. I had two different sizes of crochet hooks that I was working with. Um, they're the same color from two different sets. So like, for example, this one is a 3.5 millimeter. This is what I'm using for this blanket, but another set that has a crochet hook that's the exact same design, this is yellow. And I, I, one of them in one set was a 3.5 and one is a 2.5. And now I don't know which one I used for all the colored blocks that I knit, all the multicolor ones. So I have to figure that out so that I can crochet my white ones. But in the meantime, this is the one I'm using for this and it's staying in this <laughs> bag. I um, pull, pulled out this crochet hook. I bought this furl, it's a furls crochet hook. Beautiful, really nice high quality and you know, not inexpensive crochet hook that I purchased 
thinking I'm going to treat myself since 3.5 millimeter tends to be the size that I like to use for these crocheted blankets. I, I want a nice crochet hook and I bought it when I was doing my second blanket, which was a Lay Family Yarns Rainbow Chronicles blanket that I knit. Would that have been 2021? I crocheted, I think that was 2021 that, that they did their Rainbow Chronicles. Yeah, it was. And um, so I thought, you know, I'm doing this and I'm crocheting in my five stripes every month. I got the 20 gram minis. For those of you who are not familiar, um, Lay Family Yarns, they're amazing. They're a UK based um, dye, yarn dyeing company. Um, yarn company and Kelly and Nick Lay are the dyers. And um, Kelly, they're just amazing. They're so beautifully consistent with their colors, extremely prolific, um, just really gorgeous yarns. And in 2021, I'm sure you've already heard of this because they were so hugely popular. They did Rainbow Chronicles where they had rainbow packs of mini skeins that came out each month through the year. And they were... Um, when I say rainbow, I mean that there was a color theme for that month. So I think that January was like pinks and then February was red. March, I want to say was peach. Anyway, and orange, etc. And it went through, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm getting those exact colors wrong, but they each pack had a variety of colors, a variety of color ways for that color theme. And, um, they, I think the most popular ones were probably the 10 gram minis. I always prefer a 20 gram just because that's what I, I don't know. I, I like having the options that you get with more yardage. So, um, each pack was a hundred grams. So the 10 gram packs had 10, 10 gram minis and the 20 gram packs had five 20 gram minis. And that's what I got. So I did, I did nine months. I went through September um, and September were the the color I think was like plums or it was anyway, I remember there being a really deep, beautiful, rich kind of plum color in that one. And so I had gone from the pinks through the purples and I felt like I was, I was ready to be done. I think that for October, November and December, they did some kind of like fall um, themed. I, I, I actually don't remember, but I did that. And so back to the crochet hook, long story, not so short. I invested in getting this really nice furls crochet hook and I don't like it. That was the sad part of it. It's too heavy and too long for me. I mean, I've got that much more length in it. Um, in addition, I don't know if you can see that, the difference between the hooks themselves. I mean, it's a beautifully made hook. I think that I just, this one feels lighter and more maneuverable in my hands. And this one, I feel kind of like it's the boss. I'm not the boss. Just because it's got a lot more weight to it. I mean, it's triple at least the weight of the other crochet hook. So I know for some people, they absolutely swear by these. I just, it's not my favorite. I would love to rehome this gorgeous, expensive crochet hook. Um, if there is somebody out there who has been dying for this peach colored furls crochet hook in a 3.5 millimeter, and if if you wanna comment in the, the um, yeah, put a comment down below and tell me why you would love it, I will find, pick somebody and send this out because I want somebody to be able to use this gorgeous hook. It's absolutely, I don't think it's anything to do with the hook itself. I think it's just me and my preferences. So I'd really love to give it a beautiful new home that where it can get used and crochet all the things. I don't have the box for it anymore, so that's what you get. Um, I love these cheapo Amazon Aluminum, I'm pretty sure, with the with the uh, non-slip ergonomic handles, and they're great. I just ordered like four more of the 3.5s because I keep losing them, <laughs> using them and losing them. 
So that's what I'm working on. That is my work in progress. And that's really all I have going. Um, I've mentioned in the past that I have this blanket and you know what, next time I will show it. I have um, a garter stitch marled blanket that I'm calling my two panel blanket um, that has been sitting in my family room in a beautiful basket um, for years. And I've worked on it, both my daughters have. Um, but I just, you know, it's not something I've been working on recently. It's been sitting actually for probably a year without much progress. My daughter-in-law, Tannen, she's learning to knit and she is loving it. She has knit, um, she's knitting a sweater, a We Are Knitter sweater with the super chunky, amazing ones. Um, she's just working on the button band on that. She's knit, knitting um, a cabled hat and she has been working on that blanket whenever they come down and stay with us. So she's put quite a bit into it. So it's having some progress again. So I need to remember to show you that. It's so fun. Both my daughters and my oldest son all know how to knit. Um, my oldest son is very, very, very talented and capable knitter, but it's not his favorite thing. I mean, he enjoys it and he went through a process or a time where he was obsessed with it which is pretty typical to Ethan. Um, but he really loves, like if he's gonna do any kind of a fiber art, his favorite thing is cross stitch. And he loves doing beaded cross stitch. He's done some gorgeous Ukrainian um, patterns. And um, so he really enjoys that, but he kind of just has a lot of interests, which is wonderful. And knitting, he has not really been his main major thing. Um, and both my daughters, like I said, they know how to knit. Both of them have knit. Um, a baby sweater before. I think I've mentioned, at least on my previous podcast, Meanwhile at the Castle, I had talked about, I think one of the best patterns to learn to knit on is an in threes baby cardigan. Um, it's just pretty simple. You get to complete something and um, it's really cute. It's like a, if you make the smallest size, it's a one skein, 100 grams worsted weight project. Anyway, both my daughters have knit at least one of those. I think the my daughter Aria has knit a couple. Um, anyway, so they know. But again, it's not their favorite thing. But Tannen is loving it. So it's way fun to go on this little discovery journey with my daughter-in-law, who's really, really enjoying it. It's really fun. Okay, I think that was everything I wanted to show right now, but I'm excited to talk about a book. So the book that I am going to share with you today is called Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I wanna show you the cover here. Let's see if it'll show up. That is the cover. This is um, the first book in a trilogy, so you do need to know that. Um, the trilogy is called Red Rising, and um, it is an absolutely compelling series. I would describe it, and and I, I described it this way to a friend, and they were like, yeah, I know, that's what everyone says. And I was like, oh, I just thought I came up with that. <laughs> but it um, is, I would say, kind of like Dune. If you've ever seen the movie Dune, like especially the new, well, I don't know, either of them, but, or read the books, Dune by Frank Herbert, um, combined with Hunger Games, but make it Roman, like as in the Roman Empire influence in it. Um, it's sci-fi, it's futuristic, but it's not like the science fiction side of it is not the core so it, from a book genre perspective, um, genre fiction like fantasy or sci-fi has lots of sub-genres. And um, one of the sub-genres of sci-fi is space opera, which sounds ridiculous when you say it. When you say space opera, you think of maybe like the movie The Fifth Element with the, the blue alien singing opera. That's not what I'm referring to. Space opera is when it might take place in space, um, but it's more about the people, the politics, the relationships than it is about the technology or the, um, yeah, the, the, the science side of it. So for example, Star Trek likes to pretend that it's 
hard or, you know, high sci-fi, meaning it's all about the technicalities. But in reality, it's got a lot of space opera in it. But like Star Wars is definitely a space opera, right? Like there's nobody trying to explain to you how a um, lightsaber actually functions, right? The science behind a lightsaber. It happens to take place in space. There's spaceships. There's things that are futuristic, that, you know, robots, things that we don't have. <laughs> but that's not the point of it, okay? I would say that this probably falls in that category where it's all about the interactions. There's a lot of political, there's intrigue, and it's definitely about a revolution. That's what Red Rising means. It's a revolution that's happening in this futuristic Romanesque empire. And it is... Um, I, I like to try and tell you when I make a book recommendation, kind of what you can expect as far as content. Um, this is a, a much more gruesome series. Um, I would not recommend it for children at all. Um, and you would have to decide if that's something that you would enjoy because it is war. There's a lot of war like content in it. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's heavily gory throughout. Um, but there is some of that in it and there's a lot of intrigue and it's definitely, um, I don't know, it's got a mature feel to it. This was actually recommended to me by one of my writing students, um, a teenager named Jake, who, um, we had had some conversations about what he liked to read and I had recommended to him reading, um, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. And I will talk about that in a future one. But if you've already read it, you would know what I'm, what you'll know about it and probably loved it too. Um, but I recommended that one to him and he recommended this to me. And I originally was reading it as, as kind of a, a way to have this connection with a student that I was working with. Um, uh, but I've just been totally sucked into it. So it's been really awesome. Again, Mature content in more in the gruesome side of it. There's some language and um, sexual content, but it's neither of those things is super prevalent. It's really more about the, I don't know, the, the gruesome nature of, of war and battle and um, horrible things that people can do to each other, which is funny when I say that and then say it's an awesome book, but it really is so again intriguing there's so much about victory and relationships and what leadership looks like and um how how does one define oneself is it about the the class you were born into or the one or or more about what you bring to the table in you know into society um and it's also just really an entertaining story i think it's it's kind of heart wrenching. Anyway, I'm really enjoying it. I'm in the third book now. So the first book is called Red Rising. The second one is Golden Sun as in S O N. And the third one is called Morning Star and they're all by Pierce Brown. And yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this series. From what I understand, there are two trilogies. Um, so there's kind of the completion of this portion of the story should be happening at the end of Morning Star, but then at least the main character in the main in the same world, there's a second trilogy. I think it's two separate um, stories, from what I understand. But um, yeah, that's that's my understanding. But again, I haven't finished it yet, so. Um, I really appreciate the feedback that you've given from any of the books that you have tried that I have recommended um, or sharing your recommendations of great books. I would love to hear, you know, what your favorite book is. So give me a comment about what your favorite book is. I would love to hear that because um, I'm always looking for something new. And for those who have asked, this book that I'm reading is my 19th for the year, but Abigail, my youngest, Abby, is on 47. She is on book 47 in April. I'm running out of things for her to read. <laughs> I'm really not. I have a very large library, but um, yeah, she's, she's just absorbing everything. So my husband recently put one of our favorite kind of popcorn reading epic fantasy series into her hands and she just started that. So 
it'll be fun. But um, she just, yeah, she's voracious. <laughs> it's really fun. I remember having, I mean, I've always been a reader, but I remember having times as a teenager where you literally just could not keep me in books. I just, you, I was just constantly reading. So it's so fun when my kids go through those phases as well. Well, I think that is everything that I wanted to share today. It's been great talking to you. This has been a little bit of a longer episode. Um, I hope that you are doing well and that you are enjoying this April and that you are enjoying all of your knitting. Again, I would encourage you to um, let me know um, through the form that is in the description box that if you would be interested in testing this shawl and um, also, I really appreciate it anytime you're willing to click on the like button, leave me a comment or subscribe. It really helps me to grow my channel, which is a great, I, I, anyway, it, it's really helpful to me. And so I would appreciate that. I hope you have so much fun with your knitting and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.